There's a lot of people out there that tell you just how necessary it is to do a soil test on your lawn before you do anything to it. But I don't think most of those reasons are important enough. In nearly three years on this channel, I've almost never told anyone that they should do a test. In fact, I've barely done soil tests myself, although I have. But it's an exciting day because it's soil test day. Because there's really only one reason that I think it's incredibly helpful to lawn owners. Many people say that you shouldn't fertilize without knowing what's in your soil already. Others say you should omit nutrients that you already have in your soil in abundance. What I say is that if you regularly fertilize at reasonable quantities, then all things will basically stay equal in your soil over time. If your lawn uses two parts phosphorus for every eight parts nitrogen, and it uses five parts potassium for every eight parts of nitrogen that you add, then it doesn't matter if your soil already has an abundance of phosphorus or potassium or whatever. If you add fertilizer at an eight to five ratio, then your soil nutrient store is going to be unchanged year over year. The same goes for micronutrients, except for one glaring thing that soil tests actually help you solve. Most grass types uptake and use micronutrients best when that soil pH is in the right zone. Anything between 6.2 and 6.8 is probably great for nearly all grass types. Between 6 and 7 is fine too, it's just not quite as perfect. If you add nitrogen and push vibrant green growth at any point during the growing season, then that grass will use extra micronutrients to support that growth, or I should say it will try to use extra micronutrients. However, those micronutrients won't be used very well in your soil if your pH is too acidic, and likewise they won't be used very efficiently if your soil is too alkaline either. If your soil is anywhere close to 8.0 on the pH scale, then it will be very hard to maintain a healthy lawn no matter what you do or what you apply. A soil test may give you insight into what nutrients currently reside in your soil, but more importantly, in my opinion, the test will give you an accurate reading of your pH, giving you insight into what soil amendments need to be applied to improve nutrient uptake and usage in your existing grass. A soil pH reading of 7.4 may get you by, but adding elemental sulfur to the lawn and pushing your pH down into the mid-sixes will be your best bet or long-term health with minimal fertilization. Conversely, if your soil comes back at a 5.5 on the pH scale, then adding some form of lime can increase the pH closer to that ideal zone. Even without fertilizing your lawn at all, getting your soil pH into the mid-sixes will give you a better lawn, season over season. In this lawn, my lawn, both the front and back, I'm in the very early stages of starting a lawn renovation. This is a new home for us, and the lawn has not been taken care of in recent years. I need to fix it. Before I start planting seed, killing weeds, and fertilizing, I want to know, I need to know, if my pH needs to be corrected first. I've made videos in the past showing the differences between at-home pH test kits and the soil pH probes. In those videos, it's clear how inaccurate those DIY tests can be. I've also recently made a video showing you how you can do your own DIY test using household products that you probably already own. I did that pH test myself here in my front yard to show how it's done. And although the science behind how it works is sound, the accuracy is also not there either. The DIY test just gives you a ballpark figure in your head instead of a precise reading. And in my experience, if you don't mix your ingredients together well or pull a good soil sample or use the wrong water, then they can be way off. In my own home science experiment testing, I thought my lawn soil here was somewhere around 7.2, but I couldn't be sure until I did a better test, one that used a real lab. And this is important because if I apply elemental sulfur to lower soil pH, I don't want to apply too much. Same goes for adding lime to increase the pH. Knowing the exact starting point is important for choosing the correct product to apply and calculating the correct application rate. As many people are quick to point out, most local agriculture extension sites can and often will do soil tests for you. Many are free, so you can go that route if you want, but the paid soil test kits that let you just mail in 
handling your dirt are just so much more convenient, and the results they provide are frequently easier and simpler to read for the average yard owner, myself included. So long as they give you an actual pH result, then I'm happy to pay a few extra bucks to do my entire test without driving around town. I literally own six to seven different soil test kits from different companies. Some I bought online, some I bought locally in big box stores. Today, I decided I'm going to use my basic yard mastery test kit to see how its reports compare to the my soil test results, which should be virtually identical as they're both going to the same lab. They're same place. Mostly I'm curious how the resulting reports are laid out differently. I'm not so concerned about getting identical readings, although I expect them to be almost identical since they're coming from the same soil samples. Doing these soil tests is pretty straightforward. You just pull a bit of dirt from a few different locations in your lawn, mix them together, remove the big chunks of organic matter, rocks, and whatnot, and then add the dirt to the collection cup, bag, or whatever they give you, and you drop it in the mail. Results usually show up online in about a week, assuming you've registered your kit before you send it off. I won't go into that in, the, in this video because most tests are a little bit different and they all give you pretty clear instructions on what to do. I do recommend considering the local extension testing first and foremost because they can be free and more comprehensive. However, the test kits you buy and mail in are super convenient. I got a page down on the Turp Mechanic website linked below with a list to a bunch of different kits that you can choose from online if you want to shop around for a different brand or the best price. If you have a preferred mail in test kit for any interesting reason, then please let us all know about that kit in the comments below. But before you do anything for the fun of it, I do suggest doing your own DIY test first. Assuming you already own baking soda, white vinegar, distilled water, in about 20 minutes you can get a pretty good idea of what pH zone your soil is without using a lab. Make sure to watch the video that I made on this process. I've got it linked right up here in the corner. I did it just a few weeks ago. I also have a playlist on soil pH correction, which I have linked in the description for additional context. Also, my next video will be a short comparison of the Yard Mastery Soil Test Kit and the My Soil Test Kit, both of which I used in this video. A link to that comparison video will also be included in the video description.